Remember this book? Read it in fourth grade. And I've read it again. And it's still good as new. Hello, fellow bookquesters. It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today I have this epic, awesome, perfect fantasy book of all time. Inheritance by Christopher Paolini himself, book four in the Inheritance Cycle. I said all of this a couple years back, you know, and today I am just getting into all the specifics. Um, personally, the Inheritance Cycle is one of the most favorite books that I ever read. The, all the epic jousts and battles with magic and knights and terrible monsters such as the Razik, which has never been seen in any kind of fantasy liter literature, mind you. And it was really fresh and it was perfect. A couple days later, I decided that I would write a little fanfic story of what might have happened after in after Inheritance. And that was one of the reasons why I read the book again. Although one reason was that I wanted to like read the siege to see, you know, battle for sieging the castle. And I didn't want to read the Lord of the Rings. I don't have that book at home at least. I read that in the library. And I don't want, I didn't really want to see the Lord of the Rings movie. And I really just wanted to go for a book that had a good old siege in it, Inheritance, namely. And if we get right on to it, the basic plot is Aragorn, Shade Slayer, Dragon Rider to Saphira. He has come a very long way, in fact, since Aragorn, when he was nothing but an incompetent farm boy, to the fact now that he is a master swordsman, master in the art of the ancient language, also known as, you know, magic, and he's excellent in battle, feared by his enemies, and loved by his friends. He's Aragorn Shade Slayer, Brahm's son, Rider of Zafira. Aragorn, uh, they are marching. They are marching to the last, the Barton is marching to the last two cities, that must be conquered in order to destroy Galbatorix, the tyrant who is ruling our dear continent. Well, just, he's, he's going crazy. I don't like him. He's like a bald old dude with too much power. He needs to be stopped. And Aragorn is here to do it. Aragorn. In the first battle when they fight in Drasleona, that is the battle where Aragorn leads. They go inside secret tunnel that that someone, a historian, had managed to find for them. And they went inside Drasleona, by the way that's a fortress, where evil priests and an evil, uh, let's say, bloody cult lives. There they are, there, that is the first place of Razax, and that is where Helgrind Mountain stands, the nest place of all evil Razak. And Aragorn goes in there by using the secret chambers underneath the castle and managed to breach the city in order to s attack Gabatrix, uh, fell Dressalona. And uh, at the final fight and the climax, he uses the enormous store of magical energy that is in Arryn, Brahm's, I believe it is Brahm's ring. It's either Brahm or Aramis. I'm pretty sure it's Brahm. And Brahm used the ring, and he, Aragorn, used the ring to, and he drew the ring's power and blew down the walls of the evil Galbatorix's Dressleona castle. And that's how the battle was won. And now the Varden had one thing to do. To march to Galvatorix's home, Orgban. Er there, Aragorn must meet Murtag, his half brother, who is a great dragon rider, but is in control of the evil and twisted Galvatorix. 
And the Aragon hears mumblings of a of a werecat, of the werecat Solemnum. And he talks of the Vault of Soul and the and the Rock of Cuthian. And it seems that it's on Verengard, the place where all dragons and riders were trained in the old days. There, Aragon, and Ar but why doesn't anyone, any of the old riders, or the Indundari, the heart of the hearts of the dragon, they don't remember that place. What? And while that mystery is unraveling itself, Nasueda, the leader of the Varden, is captured, making Aragon the leader of the Varden, well, kind of temporarily. And meanwhile, things are going bad for the Varden. And meanwhile, Aragon, Aragon, he had finally found a way to fight against Gal the Torix. And I talk about all of that in the first edition of my video, but personally, I, I, I'll just say my favorite part. That's the part where Gal the Torix's soldiers are like, Gal the Torix! Die, rebels! I mean, kind of like Star Wars, in my opinion. And the Varden answered in hey. What he, what they said, that warmed my heart considerably. Aragon, the riders, and Aragon led them into battle, and long story short, they won. And Aragon, the book ends with Aragon becoming an enormously powerful magician. Why? Because he learned the word. The word. What is it? Um, if you don't know. The magic is nothing but an ancient language in which if you say it, magic, magic -like things and impossible things appear. For example, Brisinger is the word for fire, and so on. And the word is the name of that ancient language, the name of magic. With that, you can shape new words. You can create spells and magic itself. Basically, you can become super powerful. That's what Galbatorix did. But Gal Aragon, using using magic to push guilt into Galbatorix, manages to defeat him. And you know, Aragon finds the word. And Aragon wins the battle, and he drifts away with Safira into a faraway place where, I'll just say this, a lot of dragon eggs can be raised. And where those dragon eggs came from, and the mystery of the Rock of Cuthion, why no one remembers it, even the people who, even the people and dragons who lived there, and what in the world is the Vault of Souls, I'll leave it to the other review that I did a couple of years back, and also to you guys reading this book. Great book, must read a true fantasy, and even if the movie sucked, the book is even better. Let's be honest here, Lord of Rings, the movie's great, the book's really great. Aragon, the movie really is really bad, but the book is really good. And like always, your book quester and the book quester. Great book. Who doesn't like dragons after all? Especially the dragon writer.